How to create interesting purling noise backgrounds in Clip Studio Paint. First thing to do, you can see a sort of design now that I'm sort of intending to create. Create a fresh document or just use the edit menu and fill, fill the document. Now, once you've got that, just go to the filter, filter menu and draw and purl in noise. It's the only one in there, so it's just a very simple command there. Draw, purl in noise. And I'm pushing the scale up so you can actually see the, yeah, so it's not so fine. And I'm gonna go for quite a large amplitude and then attenuation, push that uh, right down. And now you can also move the repeat. It doesn't particularly make much difference then. And also offset X, you can just move that around depending on what you want. So you can actually get a nice design there. You could finish at that point, of course, if you want. But you can also create a new layer and create another layer for purling noise as well. So go to the layer menu, create a new layer. Once you've actually got that, you can see the new layer there. And just go to filter, and draw and purling noise. And again, what you want to do is push the scale up a bit so you've actually, it's not so fine detail. Again, push the amplitude up, push that back down to zero, repeats, doesn't particularly matter, and move the offset around depending on what you want. Click OK. And now what you can see, you've got two layers. What you want to do is blend those layers. So you can blend it, you can use obviously darken, you can use multiply, but I'm going to go for difference in the end. So darken, multiply, right, difference. Okay, so once you've got that, you can see those lovely lines just going through it. it creates quite nice marble designs as well, using that. I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm just going to create another purling noise. So you can repeat this multiple times. So do it three, four, five, ten times. I'm just going to do it three times. And this time, I'm just going to go for maybe a slightly finer detail. So you can just see there. Right, so I push it down close to the left. And again, all the others push that one up. And the attenuation down again and repeat down again and again you can move the offset x offset y move it around depending on what you want click ok now you can see you've got three layers and again i'm going to go for i could go with that darken multiply or and i'm going to go for that one screen but i'm going to go for difference in the end again difference so you can see these eyes creates lovely little patches there of uh, sort of lines throughout that picture so once you've actually got that, what I want now is a layer, a new layer, new raster layer, and I'm just going to fill that. So I'm just going to go for edit, and I'm going to use red. You can see there, I could change it to blue, green, whatever, but I'm going to go for red. And I'm just going to fill that via the edit menu and fill, and you can see that. Just straight away, you've got the fill. And again, what you can do, use the blends again, just go through that, and I'm going to go for difference or darken, but in the end, I'm going to select multiply. So multiply there. Now, up to you what you want there at that point. So once you've got that, just go to Layer and then flatten all the layers. So Layer, Flatten Image. And you can see then you've just got one layer at this point. Right. Now what you want to do is go to Edit and register the material. So you can actually save the, the thing you've created. I mean, obviously you could just save it to a standard file if you want, you could do that, and then bring it in later, it's up to you, of course. But this is just an easy way of, so edit and register that material. Material name, just give it a name, you could set various things, texture, it doesn't particularly matter, but I'm just gonna, or scale, tiling, up to you, depending if you want that as a tiling. Obviously it's not gonna be a seamless design. You can also set various other things you can also put a location for it. So I'm just going to store it. It's not a pattern particularly, but I'm going to put it in pattern. So color pattern, just click there. And background, and it's an artificial background. So I'm just going to click on that. And then you can just click there, just that little plus sign, and you can add a tag to it. And you can then find these materials very quickly using that. Click OK. And then it's been registered. Stored away. You can use it later. I'm just going to just going to go with a bit more now. Now apply a transform to the design via the edit menu. You could of course use filters. There's a lot of filters there. You've got transforms, a whole range of different ones there. But I'm just going to go to the edit menu and transform and mesh. Just going to go for the mesh transform and then just click on those little nodes. So you can just drag those in so you can like squeeze that material. So you can squeeze that. 
Now that doesn't change the material itself, that just changes this image here. So the material before is still untouched. So you can drag that out. And once you're happy with the design, you can see the distortion there, click OK. Right, now what you can do, again, you can go to Edit and Register Material. So Edit Menu, Register Material and Image. And again, give it a name, obviously give it a slightly different name, Red Distorted. And again, you can set all the various values. Set a location for it, just go to again, Background, and artificial, click OK. I'm not gonna, well, I could actually give more tags to it. And again, that really makes it easier for searching later. So you can put in red and search for it, but distorted. Click OK. Right, now, what you can do, you can actually go to layer, I'm just gonna flatten that image. Create a new document or just clear the current image via a fill. So edit and again fill and you can see you've got just a, a blank document now. Now to actually use the materials, well you just go to the window menu, just go window menu and you can see down there at the bottom material. Maybe that should be materials, but anyway material. Right material and then background because that's where you put it. And then you can see the materials. And this is the, just uh, there. And you can just drag one of those across, just select that. And you can see all the tags down the side there, just on the left. You just, that makes it easier to find them in that sort of thing. And then you can just drag that up and down and scale it, depending on what you want. Edit and transform, scale. So it's, make it slightly bigger than that. And you can see the design there. Click OK. Now, of course, you can duplicate that multiple times. You can add over and combine those if you want as well. But also what you can do, edit, transform, and mesh transformation. So you can actually, again, apply different mesh transformations to the mesh transform design. So you can squeeze it even more. It's up to you, of course, at this point. But you can see what you can do. You can create a whole vast range of different designs using that Perlin noise. So it's not just limited to the basic Perlin noise. That's what I'm trying to achieve layer and again duplicate the layer and do much more hope you found this of interest thank you much please uh, subscribe to the graphic extras channel and also if you can put a comment or two that's always great